Come on, Bina, log in. Dang it. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Yeah. We are live, Bina, we are live. Hello, yes, good morning, us. good morning, us. good morning, us, everybody. Good, good morning, but it's morning. still I can see this in, uh, you, in the group. You, you, you have to refresh it. Yes, you have to refresh, correct. It is there, I'm seeing it, so. Been to feature it so Norma can find it, by the way and add it to the to the guide all right we ready we ready we ready we ready ready wonderful 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 ah oh, i'm pleased to i'm pleased to be here i'm pleased to be here i'm excited to continue i'm very excited to continue I'm enjoying going over these stories it's really fun and yesterday we were you know uh, focused on on this, the strategy involved, and the and the the new nobles uh, strategy, uh, in in how they they leveraged, uh, because that's really what they were doing. They were leveraging the situation. Yes, it is manipulation, um, in one context, obviously, and like all things, it's context specific and it depends, right? And we have to be careful of associations. When we typically mean ma manipulation, it's typically negative, right? However, it's not always so, right? Um, if you if you need to give your dog a pill, and uh, you know, I don't know, people have all sorts of tricks and stuff to to get their dogs to take the pill. Uh, you could say they're manipulating the dog, right? Uh, they they wrap the pill in something, and uh, right, okay, whatever they do, right? You know, many ways we do this with our children too. Uh, there's many legitimate reasons for uh, manipulation or, as, as Ursula suggested, well, guiding maybe, or leverage, right? So this was a preemptive leveraging and the situation didn't allow for, for time and discussion and, and so it had to be done then, right? Because to organize a conference of that scale, it's a big, massive issue, takes a lot of time, uh, a lot of organization involved. And, 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 and so this, it's, they, they couldn't wait and redo this another time, right? So there's a good reason for it behind the scenes, in other words. Uh, and here we have uh, the most famous Mr. Najah. Mr. Najah. Yes, you see, two J's, two J's. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Hello, Ramsey. <laughs> I was trying not to say Ramsey, but I don't know. Just saying. Mr. Najar. Najar R. That's <laughs> having fun. That's having fun. Uh, Bina is here. Where did you go, Bina? Oh, Bina's muted. Ah. Anyway. I'm here, but uh, my, my whole, whole Facebook was stuck, so I was just. Oh, oh okay. Yes, I'm okay. here. All right, brilliant. Brilliant. Um, so I was just saying we were on this point of discussing, um, uh, you know, going through the dilemma and, and not, not so much the dilemma part, but yesterday we were focusing very particularly on um, on the aspect where how exactly um, how exactly the, the new noble leveraged the delegates, the other delegates, the non new noble delegates. Uh, to um, yes, uh, to to achieve his end. So let me just uh, one more thing to do here, uh, and, and and he did so by understanding the psychology involved, right? That le uh, raising of the frustration level to create the opening, and leveraging their self-importance, like you know, not not creating this uh, environment in which nobody wants to look like the deal breaker, and so on and so forth. Uh, so the, he, he was you, skillfully utilizing his understanding of dynamics, mechanics, uh, group group dynamics, group mechanics, um, uh, and also the psychology of the superiority paradigm as it would apply there. 
And look who just joined, Bina. Will you please look there? Can you see or not? Yes, yes. Uh, this is something, uh, it is not just uh, the story about when characters are communicating with each other only, but it is, uh, it is a story about when the character is communicating with themselves, with others individually, and with the huge, huge, huge group of people also. And yeah. they are not communicating just for the, like, like the local uh, perspective, but always they carry and they incorporate the abstract perspective also. So this is something very profound. So Elizabeth is here. Elizabeth. That, that's what I was saying. Look who joined. And then you said, yes, yes. And then you didn't say anything, Sam. So. <laughs> no, I was, I was just... Uh, Hello, hello, Elizabeth. Hello, hello, Elizabeth. I am thrilled that you're here. Um, and Norma's here too. I turned into a previous one. Today is Thursday. Yes, today is Thursday. <laughs> yes. It's a magical Thursday. And hello, Norma. Hello, Norma. It is important that Norma is here. NB, NB for Norma, right? And EE for, for Elizabeth and RN, RN, Royal Nurse. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I think RN, it stands for registered nurse, RN, not royal, <laughs> registered. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. We're all here. We're all here. All right. Uh, two, two, two fantastic. Well, there's more coming probably. So we'll likely come in when she come. And uh, Jessica, we would hope comes. Well, anyway, if they come, they come. If they don't, they don't. Uh, it's all good. You know, we're sharing. We're sharing. Uh, Norma was saying, or somebody was saying, you know, if people don't come, why am I doing this? It's not for people, it's for us, for me, right? If it's only me on my own, I'd still be sharing it. I'm putting it out into the universe, out into the world, right? So there, there's a logic sometimes to things that's not the usual normal logic. And we're gonna be seeing lots of this. Uh, look at the, the new nobility. I mean, their logic there in utilizing um, leverage and manipulation uh, was not because they necessarily wanted their name no, they just didn't want to waste the time and energy and effort for the conference to fail, right? So there's a sensibility to it. Yeah, yeah. Norma says, hi, Ramsey and Elizabeth. Oh, I love it. I love it. I, 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 I love how, you know, you guys love each other too. And this is, it, 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 it's, it's a big deal to me. It's hard to kind of describe and say and why. Ah, 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 Bina. Bina, I remembered, I remembered, I remembered what you were meant to, or not meant to, but- Sorry, what, yes, what I, yes, I, I need to remind yeah, you, yeah, but yeah, I forgot, yeah, and now yeah, you are yeah. reminded. Yeah, yeah, I need so- need to remind you, but yes. So, yes. Uh, turn them please, on, please, and, please, okay. and, yes. and view it, and in English, and it's done. Okay, so I have that, wow, helicopters flying overhead. Wow, 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 really? It's like stereo. Wow, it's like all around, quadraphonic almost, omniphonic. Wow. Wow, this is a very, very unusual sound. There must be a whole bunch of them. I can't see the sky from here, but yeah, that's 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 quite amazing the sound. I, I never heard it this way before. So I want to hide the captions. There we go. I don't want to actually show them. But uh, the reason I'm, I'm I'm fussing with the captions is because it allows me to have a transcript and I can save the transcript, and then I can make a summary from that transcript, which will, I can then add to when I post it afterwards. So that will be very useful. That will be very useful. All right. Uh, without further ado, uh, let's get to Bina reading. And there's a very important reason why Bina needs to read. Right, Bina? What is the reason? There's always a good reason, but what is oh, the reason? Oh, 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 yes. Well, you, the reason shall be apparent in a moment. Okay, let me just okay. move the screen. And okay, so I can see, I can see the chat things. Yes, we did miss you, Elizabeth. We did miss you. Yeah, yeah. So I, I assume all is well. I think Elizabeth was just work that you couldn't be here, right? Oh, I need to make this window smaller. You see, I drag the windows very strategically so that I'm able to um, see the chat and and see and see the um, and see everything. Yeah, like now. You see, if you're looking at screen. Yes. So yes. It, it's very handy. It's very handy. 
<laughs> there we Thank go. Thank you, Ramzi. Thank you, Ramzi. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so the important reason is food. Food. I need to eat. I'm very hungry. Uh, uh, and, and so, I, I'm just going to consider uh, Ramzi's excuse for that. And he says that you have a nice voice, Pina. Oh, this is why. Oh. That's it. What, what was his excuse? I, I don't understand. I was asking, like, what is the reason why I have to read it? So oh. Ramzi respond to that. Oh. He said, you have a nice voice, Pina. That's it. That is why. Okay. Exactly. Exactly, Ramzi. Thank you so That's much, That's a Ramzi. very good reason. Yes. yes. Thank you for encouraging yes. me. Yeah. Hello, B. Yeah. Oh, hello, Norma. I was just reading Hello, Bina. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hello, Norma. Yes. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Norma. Hello, Ramsey again. Okay, so let's start. Biala and the new nobility. The ethics of awareness. Biala stated. She said it flatly. The ethics of awareness. Okay. Without indication, anything was to follow. They were precisely aware of what they had done. Yala continued. The ethics of the new nobility don't allow for manipulation. One of our most fundamental concept is to always think things through to the very end. Yes. As I am trying to think you all the way through the new noble who had proposed the term agglomeration gathered together the other new nobles immediately after the assembly broke up, asking for their help. He didn't need to explain much. It was more a matter of organization. They knew the situation couldn't be left as it was. Each was assigned a group of delegates to whom they explained exactly what had happened. Now, why didn't he need to explain much? First trust. Yeah. Be the first he, and the foremost is that okay? Right. Trusting. I mean, the, right, this is now the new noble who initiated it all, and 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 those that helped him to all the new nobles that were there. We don't know how many, but right. Uh, so he's he doesn't need to explain to them because one would assume they understand what has to happen next. Yes. Yes. All right, that's why. I mean, and, and what has to happen next? I, I don't have much clarity about it, so please just explain. Right. So, oh, oh, that was disaster was, oh, wow, wow. Just avoided there. Just barely, but avoided. Well, what happens next is, look, if they don't say anything to the other delegates as to what they did and why they did it, right, then it would be manipulation. In order to not make it manipulation. And that's why Ursula's comment, she says, right, she said uh, that, while well, they manipulated the conference and she stated it as a fact. Yes, at this point in the story, it's just manipulation. In order to not make it manipulation, they have to go and tell the delegates what they did and why they did it, yes? So it's a temporary manipulation, yes, but it's not a, then the, the, I mean, if the delegates wanted to, I suppose they could re, reconvene and before everybody goes home, because it was kind of one of the last things and say, hey, I want to object to this name. Yeah. Yes. They are providing them this opportunity. So th that that's now why it is not going to be manipulation. Yes. This, so, so this is why what comes next is obvious to all the, the new nobles there, right? Because they can't leave it. If they leave it, it's manipulation. So they have to go and explain. Yeah? Make sense? Yes. Oh, uh, by the way, look, Norma, you see, I'm eating Norma. Norma Norma's very concerned about my eating. So now, Norma, I don't eat lunchtime or breakfast. I eat when I get hungry and that varies because I'm not on the usual timetable. I don't know why. I'm like on a 36 hour cycle somehow and I try to make it conform to 24 hours. So it, oh, and the, anyway, who knows? Just the way it is. Right? So I eat when I get hungry. What can I tell you? <laughs> Thank you, Norma. Thank you, Norma. Bye. Please continue, Bina. By the way, Ramsey, 
I, I agree. Yes, Bina has a lovely voice. But that's not the only reason why Bina needs to read. It's also because she reads well. Might have a lovely voice, but read poorly and then, uh, you know, but still, uh, even if she did read poorly, we'd still want her to read because then she'd need the practice. See, so all of those reasons, yeah. Right, Bina? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also for, for, uh, for understanding, when we read, when we, when we yeah. hear our own voice, when we are saying something, it's a bit more emphasis yeah. and it's a very personalized, localized kind of emphasis. And yeah. it gives and it brings uh, much more understanding and also the connectivity. Uh, if someone else is reading, I might be just looking here and there, which is not necessary, but I'm just saying that. So really? It's, it's really? You actually focus. do yes, that when, 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 when I'm reading? <laughs> sometimes it happens. Sometimes, yes. <laughs> Aras beyond Aras. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm just teasing a bit. Oh, oh, okay. I, I, Norma has a fantastically excellent suggestion here. All right, let's see. Let's see. Let me highlight this here. Uh, all right. We'll, we'll just, we'll, we'll, it's a long sentence, the, the very next one. So we will, we'll, we'll, we'll just do the first part of it. All right. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Norma, you have a very good idea here. Okay. There we go. Okay. You see, you see on screen, Bina? You see what's going on? R read ahead a bit okay. silently and then do it. Then then do it. I think she should sing a sentence for us. Okay, Norma, uh, by default, this this uh, thing actually cannot be applied because it contains should, which is completely against <laughs> all the way of impeccability. No shoulds here. Uh, sorry, look at screen. <laughs> look 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 at look at look at what you look at. That's what I said. Read ahead a little bit silently. And then read aloud. It, it's a, it's a difficult job, but okay. Because first, it's not uh, it's in a different language. Um, but uh, let me try. Why not? Just exactly. for the sleep of fun. Just for the fun of it, exactly. So, uh, where it actually ends? Okay, actions. Okay. Yeah, just do that one. Just do that one. That, okay, that's all that Biela sang, you see? Okay. Oh, I tried, but I cannot do this. Why not? I don't, I don't find any, any tunes to this. I know, it, it, it's a very difficult request. Yes. They made sure to <laughs> point out the necessity of the new nobles' actions. Yes, and it's it's a very okay. You try it. You try it yeah. now. I don't know. I, I'm not getting this this thing. Actually. I'd sing it in any way. Just to start with they made like I did. I just sang it any old way. <laughs> uh, okay. Norma, you just put me in a very difficult situation. So be alert and ready uh, for something yeah. coming up to you also. Okay. <laughs> 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 not for not for just uh, for any other reason, but just for fun on you. Okay. Yeah. No, it's not getting still. I tried. <laughs> okay. Me too. Me too. I'm trying, but it's not getting. Keep going. It's beautiful. Keep going. It's beautiful. Action is not getting into this. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, the the, the <laughs> sentence does not lend itself to to singing. I mean, new. It's when you read it, it's the new nobles's actions. Uh, no way to sing new nobles's, right? That doesn't yes, work. Yes, I, I, 
I tried my best. You you, you did you did wonderfully you well. You did wonderfully be. well. Now now all the shirts are going to Norma Ramsey Elizabeth Zell. Yeah, yeah, so you yeah. guys should also be on Zoom. Yeah, and, yeah. and I will I will just bring out some right. fun things for you right. also. <laughs> right. So <laughs> so on 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 your phone there's a voice record button, and you okay. can share it to chat. And very easy. Well, not you, Bina. I'm talking to Ramsey and Norman and Elizabeth. Yes, yes. It's a voice record, and you can share it to. And a lot of people do that, right? And then they see the little icon with the the play button there. So uh, feel free to you record that. You should join the Spice Girls, Bina. <laughs> this is Ramsey. Bina, Bina is a Spice Girl already. Before there were yeah. Spice Girls, Bina was a bit. But did you see? Did you see what the very next words are there? After after New Nobles' actions, what does it say? What's the next two words? Uh, let's read that. But nonetheless, <laughs> ensuring all the delegates were fully aware of what had taken place. Yes. Hang on, hang on. No, 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 no. The the next two words after New Nobles' actions. I didn't hear you say that. Oh, 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 I missed the oh, I missed the line. Okay, Biala saying. <laughs> yes. See? Yes. Yeah. 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 So, all right. We have to put that back in again there. You were supposed to say, but I can be able to be singing this. That didn't make any sense. Yeah. Uh, Bina does have a beautiful singing voice. It, she does. It, it, it's, it's, it's very gentle and, and loving and, and, and just melodious, as you say. <laughs> Norma, that's the right word for it. Absolutely, a very melodious just word. Just give me a minute, yeah. sir. Just give me a minute. Yeah. Uh, if I want to get really fancy pants, I could say Bina has a mellifluous voice. Mellifluous. Yeah. Mellifluous. Hang on, let me, let me type all that out there. Just to get fancy pants. Just to get fancy pants. And you know who Bina. else has? Uh, I say Bina has a mellifluous voice. Uh, I'm just, oh, I'm, no. just uh, I'm just, I'm uh, just, wow, exactly. I'm just having fun here because um, um, Norma said uh, that you have a, a, a melo melodic uh, voice. Yes, a melodious voice. Yeah. Um, and you do. And you know who else has a mellifluous voice? Elizabeth. Oh, yes, must be. Yes, yes. Be. And you know who else has a mellifluous voice too and a melodic one? Norma. Yeah, Ramsey too. Actually, Ramsey, I think Ramsey would probably have a good singing voice too. Ramsey had a very nice voice too. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, you reminded me the times I used to study the exams. I used to sing the material whilst having a glass of wine and get 94. Yes, uh, when you sing material... Uh, or anything really. It's not the singing that does it, Ramsey. It's the emphasis. And because you have an association, it's a mnemonic device to specifically associate things. So because of that emphasis, you're training the brain to remember this. And when you're singing, it's it, it, you're using the brain in a very different way. Look how Bina had to really, really focus on the stuff to sing it. Uh, so that's a very powerful technique for remembering things. So uh, if you want to remember something, just sing it or find some other way to make a particular emphasis out of it. As singing is just one technique. It's not the only one, but it works because of emphasis and association. Very, very powerful. Really fun. Really fun. Brilliant. 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 Yeah. Cheers, Ramsey. Cheers, Ramsey. All right. So uh, just so you know, now we're going to have to hear you guys sing at some point, obviously. All right. Uh, again, uh, I'm... I'm, I'm I hope that this, for your sakes, it doesn't include me, because as you heard there, I'm happy to sing it, but uh, that, you know, I, I don't like being cruel, so. <laughs> right, all right, Bina. Will you read the whole slide again from the okay. start? There? Okay, okay, yes. Oh, no. They made sure to point out the necessity for the new noble's actions, Biela said, presenting the explanation with much good humor. But nonetheless, ensuring all the delegates were fully aware of what had taken place. They were made to understand the new nobles ethics could not let them leave the matter without clarification. Their deep sense of commitment to the success of the endeavor had prompted them to seize the opportunity and act upon it. Good thing you did, otherwise we'd still be there. 
was a common sentiment expressed by the delegates. They used the intimacy of the confession and explanation to expound the ethics and principles by which the new nobility lived. Fluidity and adaptation are core concepts, Biela said. The opportunity to firmly establish the new nobility was not missed. They made sure the delegates had no misconceptions and no illusions the conference most likely would not have succeeded. The new nobles had saved the day. Unorthodox perhaps, but certainly necessary. They opened the doors of the new nobility schools to the delegates, ensuring the presence of new nobility on those words. Right, so, so now we see a bit moreness come into this, right? And, and, and this is typical of the new nobility. They understand pattern and they understand anomaly and they understand that when things happen that are anomalous, to pay attention. Now, now Biela isn't directly pointing this out here yet because, well, uh, this is early days and, and she's talking to Ursula. Well, I think at this point, the other delegates have, have joined them, right? I think so. Uh, or, or they, you know, could be there or coming soon. So, so Biela has to be mindful that she is going to be making explanations um, that, that are new, right? And, and she can't jump into like really complex things uh, yet without laying the foundations first, right? So she tells the story and and and, and depending on the on the delegate, they can they can put two and two together, right? As some of them do, as we'll see later on, right? Uh, but but so she doesn't elaborate here, but I'm going to elaborate here on her behalf, right? Um, as what's going on in a deeper way, in this that uh, when when the when the the conference the name started to get vetoed out of hand, they had prepared they had a bunch of names, but this this vetoing of every single name and just just out of hand for no particular good reason, this was anomalous, right? So and that's what Ursula said. But surely they had names. Yes, they did. So that was the point. Now. Biela doesn't use the word anomaly here because if she does, she has to go into explaining what anomalies are, how it works and all this. So just, she just said this was the unusualness of the situation. But to the delegates, the new nobility delegates, right? To them, this was like, whoa, 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 this is an anomaly here. Whenever there's an anomaly, you pay attention because there's always more with an anomaly. An anomaly doesn't just have a meaning, a, a value, a message, a hint, a suggestion, a clue, a something to do on one layer. No, it's this big pyramid. It's got multiple layers, right? Underneath and underneath. So yes, on the surface, the first and obvious thing is that they need to find a name and make it work, which they did. But what does that else does this anomaly lead to? It led to the necessity for them, if they're going to have to leverage the, the conference to get to this name, now the thing follows that they're going to have to go and explain afterwards. Otherwise, it's manipulation, right? So they go and explain. This is a fantastic gift and an opportunity. Of course, they could just go to the, the delegates anyway and say, hey, this is we, the new nobility. This is what we're about. But that doesn't have the same effect as them going and explaining what they did. Because now, if they just say we or this and that from from the typical understanding of a delegate from a new world and a world still in the superiority paradigm, uh, what are they trying to sell me? Why are they? Uh, what's their agenda? What are they trying to advertise? Oh, they want to come on my planet. They want us to come there, whatever. Right. And now it, it takes what you're saying and it gets put into that box and it's very difficult. However, when they say, look, you know, what we did with the name and explain what they did. Oh, oh, now they can see what's involved. But here's the thing. They already know that this came. They might not have been aware that all the people involved are the new nobles, but now they are. But then the next step comes. The fact that you are coming and telling me that you did all of this. Why? The, to, to, to the typical superiority paradigm mindset, there's no logic for it. You, you're sort of confessing to manipulating. Yeah. Well, yeah, so they would never do this. So this, uh, and the, the reason that the new nobility do it is they say, well, our ethics force us to do this, we have to. Ethics is a very big part of us. 
And as it says a little bit here or a little bit later, it's like, well, all right, you say your ethics, but now we're going to watch you to see if you really, if this really is so. And then they could go and ask to to worlds that have already been in the pre-existing organization, you know, because there was already some grouping. These were just worlds now new to this new thing. And they could say, well, uh, are these new nobles, are they really ethical? And then they would, yeah, yes, very much so. This ethics is a very big deal for these guys, right? It's very important. Uh, so, so this is an opportunity for them to demonstrate their ethicalness, right? And show what is and how it works. So this is very potent. And of course, then the next step is where it says there about opening up the schools. They say, look, you know, the new nobility is not something that this is necessarily for everybody, but um, it's something that if you, if whoever on your planet wishes to come and do, it's open and they can come. Now, of course, then they're all excited. Oh, well, this is very cool. And then because they're now opening it, then you've got to set up you know, an, an office on the planet where people can come and sign up and get more information on all this. So it, it enables them now to have access to those worlds, which they like to be everywhere and have access to all worlds. Right? This, the more interaction there is, uh, the more things grow and learn. It's collaboration. And, and so it's it's a very profound thing to have, right? Uh, and so so all of this comes from the anomaly of those names getting rejected. You see how it all kind of follows? There's a moreness to it. It's a very profound thing. It really is is quite magical. Uh, Bina dropped off, uh, unfortunately. So you'll have to put up with my reading, right? So so I'm just making this point though. Um, I think she should, she should bring it all from now on. <laughs> yes, I think, I think that searching everything is a good idea. Researching it is a very good idea. <laughs> I'm having some fun there. I'm having some fun with your typing, Ramsey. Um, she's making me go into all the details. Now, of course, this is, I, I don't have an ability to to make a, a thinking voice. You know, if you listen to audio, they put it like kind of in an echo chamber, a bit of reverb or something. They make it sound like inside your head, right? So, uh, but she is, the, these are Biela's thoughts about Ursula. And, and this is very important uh, because not only do we get to hear inside Biela, and this is a very crucial part of the story, but we also get to see how Biela perceives Ursula, right? And and it's, it's very powerful. The delegates from the worlds without new, new, new nobles, all seasoned diplomats were somewhat taken aback by the unaccustomed candor of the new nobles. Now, uh, just a little side note, I was thinking of a whole big long story yesterday and the character's name is Kanda. Yeah, known as Ken. Just his name, Kanda. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't know quite know how to proceed. The sophistication of the maneuver left them cautious and wary, but mightily impressed. They silently doubted the integrity of the new nobles, cautioning themselves to verify with careful study. Now, of course, the ability to manipulate is, is, is this is for a superiority paradigm mindset. Man, this is very impressive, right? It doesn't matter whether it was ethical or not. They just like the ability to uh, manipulate, right? So they're impressed, but that's why they, of course, doubt the integrity, but they will check it out. Ramsey says he has a question. Why do you refer to it as the new nobility? I guess in old times there was more nobility and moreness. And this is what the older I get, I realize. Well, uh, because the, the, if, you, if I just say nobility and call them the nobility, it is going to, to the average ear, it is going to imply titles and um, um, entitlement. It's, and it's going to imply the whole feudal system that comes from it. And, you know, the, the nobility were essentially exploiting the serfs and the peasants and all that, right? So, so and that, that went on for many, 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 many centuries, right? For a long time, for a long time. Uh, excuse me one second. Thank you, Amazon. Let me just help them out here real quick because my, my, my space is a bit full over here. Uh, that's you, Amazon. Yes. Uh. Thank you very much, mate. That's fine. That's fine. You can leave it all there. That's fine. That's fine. I'll take care of it. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Let me take it out your hands. Then. All right. Oh, anyway, it's fine. These are all for, for customers. So that's why it's here. So thank you, man. Wow. They really got you working today, man. Yeah. Ah, fantastic. 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 
Yeah, otherwise I stick him back there, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, I'll help you, I'll help you, I'll help you. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, what's on the table there is for, for people coming by, you know, to pick it up. So normally I don't have it, this is unusual, yeah. Yeah, the package deal, you know, so. Wow, I, I was wondering yesterday, you know, I didn't get anything yesterday. So I thought like, yeah, like where's everything? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm coming. I'm coming, Ramsey. I'm coming, Norma. I'm coming, Elizabeth. Brilliant, mate. Brilliant. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I'll take care of the week once later. Thank you very much. What's your name, by the way? Justin. See you again, Justin. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Very fun. Very fun stuff here going on. Oh, yeah. Oop. Oop. A new driver. Yeah. Business. Business. Important stuff. Needs to be taken care of. Anyway, so um i was saying uh, uh ramsey that uh, because of this association of nobility to exploitation it is a, a negative term unfortunately uh, you know i originally called the book the new nobility now it's titled the new nobles and the reason i'm not calling it the new nobility is because there is a book already called the new nobility and it's about the russian oligarchs which is totally appropriate relative to the historic nobility. However, we don't know really where this started. And, and we don't know if those originally, there were people in communities who acted nobly and were elevated yeah, because of that. And you know, people started to follow them. They were the leaders, etc. Or those that just put themselves in those positions to start with, started calling themselves noble to justify their exploitation. We don't know. So nonetheless, that's why it's the new nobility. And it's early on in the story, it, it is actually um, emphasized why they say new nobility, because they have nothing to do with heredity. And, you know, which is you inheriting your title and, and this idea that you are going to inherit the qualities of your, your you know, good qualities, it's a complete and utter myth. Yeah, I mean, in reality, it just actually doesn't happen. So I mean, it's just total foolishness. Um, so that's another reason why they say they're the new nobility. They're there by choice. There's no, there's no birthright involved. Right? You join the new nobility, and this is on your own merits that you, you get there, not, not because you inherited it in any way. So it's very important. It is very, very important. So this new nobility is big emphasis to make the difference. Now, uh, in in the in the whole, because of the way, if we go right back to the start, right, with the cedars and they went out and then the ships got dispersed and all that. So we, this is now we, centuries later. So in that dispersion, all each ship started on a new planet, and the culture that developed from that. Uh, generally followed sensible patterns, right? But sometimes they went in ways not not really following the noble ideal. Uh, not necessarily against it, but they didn't always go in that direction. Like sometimes, you know, the, the superiority paradigm, one person there, who, you know, the screening missed something, they started to dominate and the old tendencies came back, right? So, uh, and there probably is a planet where somebody said, you know what, I've got the noble blood in me and, uh, you know, and they, they set up titles. And so it's possible that there's some worlds there that would have that, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, so this is a very important distinction that they want to make. Now, some worlds, like on Camellius's world, they went in a whole different, they went, it's an academic world, right? Um, over time, they set this up and um, they got colleges and universities. I mean, it's, um, they, they, they figured out how to take care of agriculture and production. And so the whole world is really geared towards academics and just academically focused world. Uh, at my grandfather's time, if somebody puts his fingers on his mustaches and promise you he will do something, that means he will stick to it until death. Commitment, we lack this today. Yeah, yeah. And and, and that's the thing with the new nobility, you see. The, this is their behavior. They act in this way. Now, in the times of the actual nobility, you know, dukes and barons and stuff, they were terrible. They were supposed to be good, but there was just a myth. It was just an idea. It was just propaganda. It was just a logo, a, a slogan, like it were, as you could say, or a label, and that allowed them to get away with the most atrocious behavior. They just exploited everything. They were horrible. 
Right. I mean, I'm assuming there were going to be some individuals in them that were nicer, but in general, they were just terrible. They were just absolutely terrible. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Where's Bina? Wow, Bina completely gone. Wow. Well, they have a potential cyclone coming there. Yeah, see, she's not active. She dropped off. Um, and uh, I hope it didn't disrupt the communications anyway. We'll, we'll trust it to come back. So, yes, so the new nobility is about those who not only actually apply nobleness and, and, and being noble, but, of course, this nobility is built on the foundation of wave impeccability and moreness, right? So things like their ethics. Of course, if you're ethically going to say, I'm going to do something, then you do it. Yeah. So this is why ethics is starting to come into it now, because if you're going to be truly be noble, how can you not be ethical? Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe in the shower, maybe too. Yeah. <laughs> Quite possible. So the um, the 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 point you bring up is going to be emphasized very often. It's always the new nobility. If somebody says the nobility the, and uh, there's a new noble present, does them the new nobility? They will always correct them on it. They're very very particular about this, right? Because each time it's said, it brings up the question that you asked: Why? And when you are, when that question is then answered, the why is by association when you hear new nobility, new, you you hearing the why, which is that they are about way of impeccability, uh, they are about ethics, they are about integrity, they are about honesty, right? They are about doing more, etc. They are about moreness, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? So, so that word new takes new nobility into a whole other realm right and it, it says that they they are way more than nobility ever was so new nobility becomes its own term as opposed to nobility right and and in the agglomeration at this point in time new nobility can be a hyphenated or even an unhyphenated term meaning a, a different thing to what nobility means so it's not the new nobility it's new nobility as one word yeah, or one hyphenated concept, see? And the new nobility is a whole thing that's never really been in history ever been before, right? They don't have any any likeness to them. Um, the only reason that nobility comes into it is because is because they are they are they really do mean to to be noble, which is do extra, right? And being noble is a big deal. Uh, we are new and this is a new age. Yes, exactly, Elizabeth. It comes into that as well. So uh, at least in our times now, we'll see this as new age. Of course, in the future, when they are, that new age is an old age <laughs> by that time. Right? <laughs> it's long since gone. Hello, Bina. I'm glad you're back, Bina. I'm glad you're back. It's yes. very, 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 um, yeah. Um, I'm very, I'm very pleased you're back to continue. Uh, neo nobility, no, not neo. Maybe I guess you could say that because they are post noble because neo means post uh, afterwards, right? Or following on from. Uh, but but that also implies a connectivity to the old nobility, and they aren't neo nobility, no, because they have absolutely nothing at all to do with the old nobility, right? So neo nobility would not work, would not work at all. Yeah, yeah, because that, you know, like if you're a neo, um, uh, neo romanticist in art or something, it, it implies that you have some sort of origins in romanticism, the art style of romanticism, and now you, you're just doing it in a different way. No, they have no connection to the old nobility whatsoever, none, because the old nobility were criminals. They were horrid, terrible BMN criminals, right? They're terrible people. Right, uh, exploiters, abusers, manipulators, the, the worst that you could possibly mean, liars and you know, criminals, just abusers, They're horrible. So uh, it, it, it's an important point. I'm glad you asked the question, Ramsey. I'm glad you asked the question. So, all right, uh, Bina, um, we were here with, uh, they didn't quite know how to proceed after the sharing from the new nobles. 
right? Uh, the sophistication of the maneuver left them cautious and wary, but mightily impressed. They silently doubted the integrity of the new nobles. Of course, in the superiority paradigm, this is impossible. Cautioning themselves to verify with careful study. So you got to check it out. Say, all right, you say you are this. I want to really see that you can do this because to the superiority paradigm, this is an impossibility, right? Now, not all of those are in the superiority paradigm. There's some like Camellius, who is a little bit of it, yes, but it's not the focus of the world, right? Now, the way that typical academics is structured, it is structured within a hierarchical superiority paradigm framework, uh, which unfortunately corrupts it somewhat, as we're going to see, right? Uh, but still, you know, he's, it's not his prime focus. His prime focus is academics within the paradigm, not the paradigm itself, right? So he's not looking to be superior. He's looking to learn and grow and study and understand, but academically mm -hmm. rather than practically. And we're going to see this difference. It's a very big difference. Biala wondered where the other delegates were, but was happy for the alone time with Ursula. I do like her. She's in command of herself, yet... Yet, please read, Bina. Um, okay. I, I like this this art, by the way. This is very yes. yes. Um, yeah. It's a kind of like you cannot say anything specific about it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is so so beautiful. And and, and now later on, right now we we don't have this, and maybe I should have brought it in earlier. But there's so much to bring in. But as the story comes on, we are going to learn that uh, Bella, Biala, by the way, yeah, would be very conservatively dressed for a new noble. Right. Now, but yeah, arriving on the planet, they would have seen other new nobles. So uh, part of the new nobility's philosophy is this dress or appearance where they, they would have this wild um, apparel, right? And you might want to call them costumes, outfits, works of art that they are. Uh, the reason for it is that in this, when we look at this, this painting here, we look at this person, right? Uh, you can't really tell where they're at. And you can't box them. You can't say, oh, you know what? This is a mother. This is a professional. This is a working person. And no, you have no clue. They could be anything. You have no idea what they are. And of course, when, if you were to see this in reality, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and you, you, you have this wild way of dressing, but it makes no difference to you. You couldn't care two hoots what you're wearing, right? It's totally irrelevant. And, and you see somebody with this on and you think, man, that's a really ridiculous outfit, but wait a second, the person wearing it couldn't be bothered whether it's ridiculous or not. Wow. That, 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 that says a lot about them right away. And that, that immediately takes them out of the superiority paradigm, right? Immediately. If you're walking around in what could be, not necessarily is, but could be seen as a ridiculous outfit, costume, whatever, and you don't care, well, either you're oblivious, which you obviously are not, you can see the person's aware, or you don't care. Wow, wow, oh, wow. they don't have ego, in other words. Oh, my goodness, wow. Now, already, they are not a usual, typical, regular person. They, they, in, and you can't categorize them, you can't box them. Right. So when you do the box there, OK, are they a, a parent, a worker, this or that, whatever the boxes are that people put you in. There's a very bottom, there's the box called other. Right away with this, right, this particular individual, wouldn't you have to put them in that box called other? Right? Bina, you'd have to put them in that box, right? Yes. And that's the, that's the intent behind such. And that's why you'll see it in the in the uh, the art that I tried to choose uh, to represent this. Did we have any others here? Uh, that's just a very vague one. Uh, I don't know if I have, uh, they, they were very hard to find. Uh, they're very, very hard to find because most artists draw what they know and they, what they know is people involved in the superiority paradigm. So you always see some kind of an attitude of some kind, uh, some kind of a, a vibe or a feel or something. So it's very difficult to find this kind of art, but yes, I do like it quite profoundly. Yeah, and, and you see the, the second face here, right? Sticking the tongue Yes. Out. Yeah, very profound art, very profound art. I'm glad you noticed it, Bean. I'm glad you noticed it, very important. Yes, so this is this is interesting. Mm. I don't know that neo, neo nobility, this is what Ramsey said. Um, yeah, no, it doesn't work. I, I explained before you came on. 
Yes. You, okay. you asked earlier why I keep saying new nobility, um, because they are so different to the old nobility and neo, like yeah, a neo, ultra nobility, ne ultra nobles. Yeah, but again, you see, any any modifier other than new implies some connectivity to the old. Like if you say ah. you're a neo-fascist or the neo-cons or a neo-romanticist, you're saying mm -hmm. we're connected to the old fascists or the old romanticists, but we're doing it differently. No, they're not doing the old nobility differently. They are doing something else entirely, right? So the only one really that works is new. I mean, if they call them themselves the mourners nobility, that doesn't work either because it still implies that it's the old nobility, but mourners. No, they knew. They knew nobility. There's no other word for it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. well, I suppose well. you could say you could say the reinvented. No, but reinvented also implies it's based on the old. Uh, you know, some synonym for new, but it has to be new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, right. Now, um, um, now Ramsey, no, Ramsey adds an additional point here, which is a very cool point, yes. right? Uh, and now, mm. now Ramsey, now you are articulating uh, something that is important to the new nobility, and they do not become the old nobility even after centuries. Why? Because they have a living culture. Uh, remember, I was saying it's an oral culture. And one of the reasons for it being an oral culture is that they do what we do now. This is most of their lives revolve around uh, discernment, awareness, understanding, application, doing, right? And, and, and learning and growing and, and taking things further. So, so what they are keeps getting added to reinvented new. So yes, they are the reinvented new nobility. That you could say, yes. And they are constantly being reinvented. So they are constantly new because if you were to go in their society today and go back a century or two, and you'll say, yeah, but you know, this is something that was added just, you know, a week ago, a new day, right? And it takes a while to spread throughout the entire population because it's all oral, right? And by the time it gets to, then it's already updated again. So it's constantly being updated, right? So they do stay new, they don't get old. And because they are engaging in, like us, right? We, Bean and I have done this before. We've gone over, you know, we, we, we did the slides. Bina helped me with the, with the artwork here and we put all this in, right? And she did a beautiful job on many of this. I don't think we actually got to this one yet, Bina. I'm not recognizing some of the Bina touches here. Now, anyway, uh, in some of the other programs, right? So, but we've gone over some of this before. But like wave impeccability, I don't know how many times uh we've we we've we've gone over way of impeccability uh right uh, probably a couple dozen times by now or something like that right and each time there's something new ramsey each time there is something new i mean just the other day i added more understandings or, or delineated them or expounded them i mean i knew them but i didn't have them written out to to actually, because uh, somebody was saying, you know, they're struggling with getting a, a grip and understanding of what impeccability means. So, I, I, the, you know, I, I wrote it all out and then more came. And that's what happens, right? Whenever you go over things, more comes and then it gets updated. So these programs, uh, they, they get changed all the time. I mean, you see, you've seen me add slides to things, right? Some of your comments have been added uh, to the programs. At some point, uh, you know, if you take this over hundreds of years, you might have very little of the original program left in it, right? It could get rewritten, redone, etc. So it's it's this this is part of the philosophy, the logic, and the policy of the new nobility, which is again why new is so important. They they strive to constantly stay new, fresh, because why they are guided by appropriateness, right? So if the old becomes the new becomes old at some point in time. Uh, then you haven't really been staying in touch with uh, with appropriateness and uh, particularly also staying in touch with attunement, right? Because nature, is nature old or is nature new? Ramsey? When you go out into the forest, it may be an old forest, but it's still new at the same time, right? Because there's new growth, the trees regrow, etc., right? Maybe on a different timescale to what we normally have, right? But nonetheless, yeah, 
there, there is always that renewal and growth. So nature is a good example of where things uh, don't get old. Yeah. Right, Ramsey? They keep refreshing. I mean, even the trees, they, they lose their leaves, even if they're evergreen trees, some of the branches dry off, uh, dry, die out, fall off, regrow, and so on, right? So there's this constant renewal to keep things new. Yeah, make sense, Ramsey? Yeah, I mean, it's an important point. It's a very important point. It's very dear to the philosophy of the new nobles to stay fresh. Okay. Uh, yeah, so he uh, respond. Okay. Okay, go ahead. You read, please. You read, you read. Okay. Uh, renewable energy, yes. Uh, no. Like energy. Uh, like energy. It's always renew yes. and it's always Exactly. Renewed. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And, and the new nobility apply this concept of renewable energy. Literally, it comes into the story in a very big way um, later, but also they apply it in the context of the energy that impeccability is all about, right? First rule of, or first um, understanding of impeccability is best use of energy. And if you don't yeah. renew your energy, how is that the best use of your energy? It's not, yes? So the renewable energy in, in, the, in, the, in, in not in the way that we know it, you know, from a, a literal mechanical sense, uh, which is of course important too, but in the sense of energy, energy, right? Emotional energy, psychic energy, psychological energy, spiritual energy, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, that energy, if it, it has to be renewable, right? If not, you're going to run out of energy and then what? Yeah? Yes. So yeah, very, very powerful, Ramsey, very important point. And again, you know, it's, these are all things which, which are intrinsic into the, uh, the the culture of the new nobility, as we're going to see, like like renewable energy, the the whole planet is runs on renewable energy. They, they don't they don't have anything else but renewable energy. Yeah, and and they, and they have an abundance of it, uh, as you'll see later on, because one of the the uh, founding members of, well, I suppose the founding member of the uh, the whole concept of the new nobility and the noble ideal. Uh, and and this 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 founder comes into the story uh, as a as as a kind of a semi mythological character. Uh, it's a real person, right? Uh, but over time, um, you know, like like when we say Hercules, right? I mean, right? I don't know if Hercules was now a real person or not, but but I'm just going to use him as an example, assuming there was an actual Hercules at some point, right? Um, uh, but but uh, many people have made up stories and myths featuring Hercules, right? And that 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 aren't anything to do with what the actual stories were back in the day, right? And so so Hercules, uh, uh, we could say you know Hercules is a is a is a real figure and an historical figure and um, and also mythological at the same time. So it's not quite that much with the, the, this founder of the noble ideal and then where the new nobility started and everything, um, but they called the young man. So, so the young man is a very powerful character in the story. And one of the things that the young man was particularly fond of was renewable energy. He invented a whole bunch of them um, and uh, in a very real way, right? Uh, he wrote about them, and then years later, they actually came and happened. And this is a thing, uh, anyway. So uh, this is why the renewable energy is is an abundance because, and they just for the fun of it, they 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 just said, well, you know, we've also invented our own stuff, but we we're just going to apply some of these ideas just for the hell of it, just to see if they work. You know, like people took some of of Leonardo's drawings, right? Uh, like his helicopter, his helicopter drawing. Remember, uh, or you've probably seen it, right? And and people have built it. They've actually made an effort to actually build it and and make it, right? So in in likewise, uh, some of these ideas of the renewable energy that the young man had, uh, you know, kind of as just sort of a side project uh, on Nobilia when they set up the planet, because at that time they had lots of wealth already, and you know they could do this. Um, they they just implemented all of these just for the hell of it. Just, just for the fun of it. And of course they worked. They might not be as efficient as some of the more modern technologies, but they worked. All right, sorry, we were in a wonderful digression, Ramsey. Wonderful. Renewable energy is a very important part of impeccability. It's critical. 
it's critical, very important. All right, please continue, Bina, please, please, please. Yes. <clears throat> Unless there are more comments that I didn't see. No, I didn't, okay. I haven't seen any, so, okay. Oh. It didn't take long uh, for them to come to see the integrity of the new nobles was unparalleled. In the mm. early days of the agglomeration, the new nobles were both highly sought after and avidly avoided at political conferences. Yes? <laughs> yes. They would, yes. They would surely have been unpopular with the average politician. Harsla <laughs> laughed. They wouldn't have been able to bribe them or make deals, she chuckled. If I understand it correctly, the new nobility were already fairly well established at that time. So they were a force to be reckoned with. Yes, yes. Now, as the story goes along, well, we already know from the from the um, seeding the dream from the prologue, right? That mm -hmm. the great gravity engine, this belonged to the new nobility corporation, right? And and uh, we're going to find out in, later on that all all new nobles are, are also uh members employees of the new nobility corporation right uh, i say members because they are both shareholders and employees right both at the same time so so the the new nobility corporation and the new nobles is one and the same thing essentially right uh so the whole planet nobilia belongs to the new nobility corporation right uh, and all that renewable energy, it's all comes out of the corporate coffers and and the uh, the new nobility corporation, it was already the wealthiest corporation back before they left on seeding the stars, right? So even back then it was wealthy. And all those ships, they all belonged to the 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 new nobility corporation, and everything, right? So anything that comes from that, of course, down, even though you're on a separate planet, hey, you still use the technology, all this, you know, comes from us, all right? So they have a, they have a toehold. Now, I just long ago, you say, never mind, you just made your own stuff. But still, uh, now that we have this agglomeration, by implication, it means that somewhere along the line, there is space flight again. Remember all the spaceships crashed, right? But obviously, yes. and and that they weren't most of them weren't going to survive. But on that, the core ship, the one that had the the founder on it of the whole idea, of this noble ideal, and and also um, on that ship would be the the inventor of the engines themselves and the engineers, a small circle that built that. So of course they could redo it. Yeah. And and over time, they obviously did when, you know, first they were going to take care of obviously the survival things and food and production and so on. But at, 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 they would also put some energy and effort into um, making sure that not only did the did the secret of the great gravity engine survive, uh, but that it is going to survive safely and will stay in the hands of the new nobility. Right, uh, and not just the new nobility corporation uh, as a corporate secret, but also uh, from uh, a culture of the new nobility. Right. So obviously, on that particular planet, it's the seed planet for what later becomes Nobilia. Right. Um, that's where all this starts, and and then later on, as uh, as things go, they get this engine and they start. They go. They find other planets and they start to make associations and so on. And then it it, it takes a couple of centuries before we get to the agglomeration and where we are at with Biela and Ursula, it's already a few centuries after the agglomeration, right? So either way, these, this has been around for a while. But think of this when Ursula says a force to be reckoned with. Now, she may not be aware because it's not something the new nobility will make known. They're not going to hide it either, but they don't want to advertise it necessarily. But the fact that all this, the, the, the starships the spaceships that brought Ursula to Nobilia from her planet are owned by the new nobility corporation and by by default owned by the new nobility, right? So they control spaceflight entirely. So even in the early days of the agglomeration, from the very first planet, the second planet that joined the one where the where the where the the, the, the great gravity engine was re re put together, from that one two planets. 
this is it. The new nobility were always a force because all, all space travel goes through them, right? And this is what makes the agglomeration really, really works. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, okay, Norma. All right, all right, all right. So anyway, uh, just to just to wrap this up real quickly, um, they have this this power. They were a force to be reckoned with right from get go because they had the spaceships. Okay, keep going, keep going. Norma's encouraged us not to dis to, to to digress too much. So, no. <laughs> will you read again, please, Bina? Read again or read the slide. Next slide. Uh, continue, continue. I mean, oh, oh, do we have to go next? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Okay. Sharp, is she making a statement of how she perceived the new nobility or does she just not know? We always act independently. There is no group or political stance by the new nobility. Surely she knows this, but if she doesn't, how do I let her know without making her look ignorant? Is that even a concern? Biela thoughts were interrupted, saved from her dilemma by the arrival of uh, the other delegates. We were discussing how the new nobility were influential in the politics of the past. Oh, we were discussing how the new nobility were influential in the politics of the past. Biela seized her opportunity. It is, however, a common misconception the new nobility are a cohesive organized group. We have no leader or central organization. Admin and bureaucracy are kept to a minimum and rotated through all the new nobility. Everyone takes their turn. Uh, where you said, oh, we were discussing how the new nobility were influential in the politics of the past, right? How were they influential? Simply because they didn't necessarily make an effort to get involved in the politics. But mm -hmm. uh, in that, after that first conference, right, where they are going and explaining their ethics and how they do things, now every single member of the agglomeration is aware of uh, the new nobility and what they stand for and what they are about. And why, uh, and the fact that integrity and ethics are absolutely prime to them. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. if you have an agglomeration, Right, a, a, a um, uh, what was our name? Uh, we said a, a global admin, right? Yes. A League of Nations, a federation, mm -hmm. any any group where you have wildly divergent uh, uh, smaller groups joined together, you are going to at some point need diplomacy and diplomats. You're going to have conflicts and stuff going on, right? Yes. You need you need contracts to be negotiated. Blah blah blah. Now. In this context, if you are uh, looking to, you've got some either a dispute or you want to have a contract negotiated or you want to sign a treaty or whatever you want to do, who are you going to ask in order to be your arbiter, be your negotiator, be the host of your, of your talks that you're getting together with? Mm. So, so, of course, you're going to go to those you can trust which is you've already now, they set themselves up back then in the very first conference, right? To have ethics and integrity. And remember the delegates then said, oh, we're gonna check this out. Over time, they do check it out and they do really make an effort to see, is this for real? And they say, oh, it is for real. So of course the new nobility becomes the de facto, the default uh, um, diplomatic core of the agglomeration. And because they're a corporation, they say, yes, we'll be more than happy to arrange a conference for you, to broker your conference, to uh, to be the arbitrator, whatever it is, right? Do your contract negotiations, um, but we'll charge you for it, right? So it's they add it to their business. <laughs> so, so they become the diplomatic core of the agglomeration and it's also part of their business. And of course, because they have the ships, it all goes together. It's like, well, duh, right? And you, you do want your diplomatic core, at least you want a diplomatic core to be one that has ethics and honor and, and honesty and that you can trust implicitly. You want those to be in charge of the spaceships as well. How are you gonna possibly have a war between planets? Not possible. Hmm. Because the new nobility control the spaceships. Right? 
So they're not going to ferry, they're not going to take your troops across or whatever. No, not going to happen, right? So war between planets, uh, at least planetary systems, is out of the question. Within a solar system, yes, because you can still, like we can make war on Mars. Let's assume Mars was populated, right, uh, as a planet. Um, this is possible with the technology that we even have now, right? But to do so between you know, different solar systems inside a galaxy, that's a whole different ballgame, right? For that, you need the great gravity engines or something similar. So, yeah, so the, again, there are planetary wars or even in, you know, typical wars between nations or whatever. And the new nobility are the, uh, they, the diplomats. They are the, the, the whole galaxy's diplomats, right? Exactly, was our superiority paradigm precisely, and 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 of course this is the agglomeration goes out of this and war within the agglomeration <coughs> doesn't really happen, right? So this is very powerful. All right, and then of course the the fact that the new nobility doesn't really have a central leader, this throws people out in entirely, and but they come to understand very soon that you can talk to any single new noble. And they can speak for the entire new nobility. How cool is that? Exactly, exactly, Elizabeth. Elizabeth says, if we only give attention, capital A attention, to integrity and capital I integrity, I would assume there, right? Uh, so much would disappear. Exactly. And when we shift it to appropriateness and impeccability, and then you automatically start paying attention to integrity. Integrity is synonymous with impeccability, uh, but it's impeccability is even going further than integrity only, right? It takes it a little more. So very powerful. Very, very, very powerful. Really, really e extraordinary. And that's why the agglomeration is such a profoundly different place to old earth. Right? I mean, there are plenty of new Earths in the agglomeration, um, but old Earth, as they call it, where they came from, because it's no, they're shifting out of the superiority paradigm and the, the paradigm of the agglomeration um, does not have that as its basis. It's not, it's not the, the nobility paradigm, it's not the mourners paradigm necessarily. It's more geared towards being, uh, or it's not more, it is specifically geared to maximum freedom of individuality. Right, uh, whether you want to be a new noble or you want to do sports or business or art or whatever you want to do, doesn't matter. Right, uh, this is it's geared to maximizing this this option for you. All right, please keep going, Bina. Very cool, very cool, very cool. I love uh, Elizabeth's comment. Yes, absolutely. Mm. And and it's, uh, this is something exactly in every aspect of our life and as every aspect with ourselves also. Uh, integrity is in other, in other words of course impeccability no. but uh, integrity in common right. words it's right. so uh, and we can right. definitely uh, avoid so much of right. negative consequences yes. so so there is some warnings to this let, let me elaborate on this morning sorry norma it's very important to the story and it is part of the story so in the agglomeration right uh, you have the new nobility not only as the diplomatic core but they are the cultural heartbeat of the agglomeration. Now, if we think in our society, who do we look to for our guidance in terms of how we live? Yeah, it used to be the church, right? The priests, right? And they told you how to live, how to be. Then uh, also back in the day, you look to the nobles, the old nobles. But what did you learn from the old nobles? They were simply the pinnacle of the superiority paradigm, right? So this was a terrible cultural way to do, right? And even in religion, it was all hierarchical, right? Same thing. So it didn't really help you. But look at our, our, our cultural guidance today. Where do we get it from? Not from the church anymore. Yes, to a certain extent, we get it from corporations because they're telling you to behave this way, but also they focused on selling. So they'll really teach you to be ethical. But we get much of our cultural guidance of how to be and how to live as people from celebrities. Are these a good, are these a good source of guidance from a cultural point of view? Right. Uh, well, they might, uh, uh, Ramsey, if we, if we remove them from, they might become new nobles, but not, not really. 
Uh, they might just become somebody doing their own thing. New nobles have a very particular culture, which is the, the, the way of impeccability. Uh, if you take somebody out of the economics, they don't necessarily have a way of impeccability. Not at all, right? And uh, so, uh, yeah, it, the, 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 the economic culture certainly disrupts people. But what I'm saying is you can be out of, all right, let's say you win the lottery and you go and retire and you take all your friends with you and you make your own little village and there you guys all living happily out of economics. It doesn't mean that you're necessarily disassociated from the superiority paradigm. Right? You're still going to be influenced by things like status and ego and, and performance and comparison and so on and so on and so forth, right? So the new nobility, they don't have any of this. They, their cultural underpinnings, their philosophical underpinnings, these are very, very different. So the point I want to make is that, right, say that society there, they're still going to be watching TVs and movie and stuff and still be taking their influence of how to be from the media, from TV, from star, and by default from movie stars, right? TV stars, right? Celebrities, in other words, right? Whether they're not TV or movie, they can be celebrity on today. There's all sorts of different kinds of, you know, influences, whatever, right? And that's why they're called influences, because they're influencing thinking and policy and ideas and that. But all of those add to how you live. Now, in the agglomeration, though, who are your prime influences? Yes, those are still there, but all of them are superseded by the new nobility. So the, we, 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 this comes later in the story. And when we said, well, it has actually come now already, right? Yeah, removing greed. Correct, correct, correct. Yes. Uh, so so this, where, where, when the new nobles went to the delegates at the first conference, right, the agglomeration conference, and they explained what's going on. And they opened up the nobilia, the new nobility school to the to these worlds, uh, uh, which now also by, by, by implication and just as a consequence allows them to uh, put up an office to say a recruitment office or whatever, signing up office on these other worlds. So that means the new nobility can go and live on that world. And the vast majority of the new nobles do not live on nobilia. Maybe 10% or so does. I don't know the exact percentage, but a small percentage. They live in the agglomeration because they go where attunement takes them and attunement takes them and spreads them out throughout the agglomeration. So if you think of this as uh, in our culture, right? Okay, uh, the the... The celebrities, they all live in Hollywood. Okay, it's not technically true, right? That they all live in Hollywood or Bollywood or, or similar places, right? But imagine if, if roughly for every five or 6,000 people, which is a typical suburb, right? A typical community, right? Uh, wherever you live in any city, if you look at like where your stores are and how people are congregating and where there are churches or mosques or whatever, it's typically roughly in that five to 10,000 range of people, right? Any bigger than that, you start to lose track of who the people are, your brain can't remember them. So essentially a small town. And if you look at cities, there are these groupings of little small towns, neighborhoods, right? Uh, even though there might not be a political neighborhood or municipality technically, but a neighborhood, is that it's in that number more or less. Now imagine in our world today, in your neighborhood that you are, right, Mina, you live in a city, it's a big main street there, it's very built up, but you still, when you go shopping, you, you don't walk all that far and all that, right? It's it's essentially yes. in that neighborhood. Imagine if you had uh, uh, celebrities there, a couple of them living in that neighborhood who were mm -hmm. known to, to everybody as celebrities. Right? No, it doesn't matter what they say, they're just as a celebrity. And they hang out, you go to the supermarket, oh, there's a celebrity, hello, and uh, and they are part of your community. Yeah. Now, as celebrities, yeah, you... Right? Say again? Actually, they are. <laughs> right, right, right. All right. But 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 my point is, though, uh, yes. where I'm going with this, heading with this, is that if they were celebrities, what do you do with a celebrity? Oh, there's a celebrity. Oh, they're famous. Uh, you're going to gawk at them and maybe admire them or whatever, but that's about as far as it goes. They don't really make much of a difference, well, maybe where you are, but I'm, I'm, no, I'm generalizing nothing. now, right? No, actually right. nothing. Right, right, exactly. They don't make any difference. But yes. if, if, if now, now change out those celebrities in your neighborhood with new nobles. 
First yes. of all, they're going to be walking around in these wonderful outfits. So you're going to notice them right away. Yes. But what yes. are you seeing? It's not the outfit that you're seeing. You're seeing a person who is in that box of other. Ah, oh, hmm. this is a other different way of being. Oh, I don't have to be the way I grew up. I don't have to conform. I can be other. So just their very presence says that there is this option for you to break out of the boxes that you think are available to you, right? Because each neighborhood has its own set of boxes, right? And if you grow up in a manufacturing neighborhood or a mining neighborhood, you know, uh, like all the things that are involved with mining or manufacturing or whatever, or forestry, if you grow up in the country, farming, if you grow up in, see what I mean? You have a limited range of options, but if you see, oh, wait a second, yes, this jumps the whole paradigm of your environment, your neighborhood, right? So it just blows your mind. Plus, of course, because they are applying independence of being, they are applying and practicing way of impeccability, moreness, nobility. It is a, a by its very existence, is an example of possibility. So they don't try to educate, but they will present options through their very being. So if you had this in your neighborhood, right, and you are interested in mourners in any way, or you're saying, how should I be? What should I do? Where do you look? Well, you, you look to those that have the highest status in your community, which, uh, you know, typically is like either your politicians or teachers or priests or whatever. And if those aren't very good examples, well, then you kind of lost. But imagine if you had a new noble in your environment. They're not trying to say, live this way, live this way. It's completely up to you. But you see it in their being, in their presence, in their comfort with themselves, in their ability to be free and fluid and open. And of course, you can go and ask the new nobility anything, anytime. They're always open to talk to you, right? Unlike a celebrity, right? This is it. It's part of the deal. So can you imagine the cultural influence of the new nobility? Yeah, just imagine in your own particular community, Bina, if when you went shopping, you and Amy, because you always go with Amy, right? When you, when the two of you go shopping and you're walking down, I say, oh, new noble. And you say, you know, I, I, I really been wondering, you know, this has been bothering me. I, I don't understand. Like, let's say you were young girls now, right? I don't really understand what ethics means. And nobody will tell me. Well, let's go and ask the new noble. They're always open to such things. Because you know this, you've heard about it. You know, yes, they like to discuss things. They like to talk. They like to explore. Ah, let's go. And now you have this deep conversation about ethics. Would that be something transformative in your life, Bina? Then would that not have been? I, I don't know. Maybe not for you personally, because you know your family is very concerned with this. But you see my point, Bina? So uh, this is, <laughs> and, and, and Ramsey yeah. and Elizabeth and Norma, right? So the new nobility are a, a glue, a cultural glue that yes, the neighborhood still does what it does. It's still a mining neighborhood or a, a farming community, you know, in a town. But nonetheless, the new nobility is always there as that box of other, so that I don't have to follow the pattern of the community. I can be other, right? Because if they can be a new noble and soon, you're, well, it's open to anybody, right? And you can go and ask them, I, I want to be a new noble. How do I do this? Oh, well, and then they explain, right? It, it changes the very culture. And of course, if you have this in your, in your community, yes? And the, the, this, just imagine in your community, uh, Bina, now, now your family is not, not uh, uh, you know, they, they're a very nice family and they're not, they're not um, inclined to bad behavior. Yeah? But, yes. but just think, just think though, in, and, and, and like some others that we do know who grew up in environments where they had within their family, they had people behaving terribly, right? Yes. Yes, <laughs> uh, yes they are in a way, uh, oh, now, Elizabeth, yes, yes, they are. They, in this world of ours, they are undercover, correct. But the time is coming for them to go, to come out of their undercoverness, absolutely. Uh, but uh, so so now I'm saying though, Elizabeth, you may you may relate to this also a little bit. If you think of cultures that you've lived in, right, and environments that you lived in, and, and there were BMNs and dreadful people, if there was, uh, and, and the new nobility are never alone, they at least two, always, at least a pair, right? Uh, whether they are personally connected or not, or just friends, or sometimes three, four, doesn't matter, right? There's only, there's always at least two of them. If you had such in your community, 
think of how this would change the behavior of so many people that you might have known. Yeah, I know uh, profoundly, um, well, Elizabeth, right there in Jerome. Imagine if there was a new noble living in Jerome, right? And I, I met Elizabeth in Jerome. Uh, how that 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 entire community of Jerome would be a very different community. And half of the nonsense that went on with the people that were there would be like, uh, you know, you're walking down the street, you see the new noble, you're going to like be a little bit more uh, defensive, maybe or cautious, or, you know, you wouldn't be able to 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 be out loud with your nonsense because even though they're not preaching, they're not telling you how to be, uh, it's just automatically has that effect that when there is something that contrasts, you don't do it, right? It's like when you're walking down the street, you're in the supermarket and there's a priest, you don't swear and when in the supermarket when the priest is within your shot, right? It changes your behavior, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, at least we hope so, you know, it, it used to be that way in the old no, days, right? You don't, no, you no, don't tell I, dirty it, jokes when the priest is there and things like that. It right? just, it just reminded me of my, my boss at, uh, at our sponsor, Daniel Bhai. He literally ah, right, bites right, his right. tongue and he says, oh, be nice here, I cannot swear. So, yes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, and that's just you, Bina, you know what I mean? And like, okay, Bina, undercover new noble. Yes, Elizabeth, so are you. Right. But you see my oh, point yes, though, right? Yeah, now, if you were in that outfit, in that costume, in the style of the, where you so instantly recognizable, when you walk into a room, everything changes. That's it. It's just going to happen, right? And this is appropriate because you've spent your entire life. Now, not you. I mean, we're still trying to be new nobles, but I'm just saying uh, when, when you go out in, as a new noble, when they go out into the agglomeration and they go and live wherever attunement takes them, wherever anomalies point them to, right? And and somehow they get spread out nice and evenly. The universe just takes care of it. That's quite a magical thing. Nobody knows how it works, but it does, right? And the number of it stays too. It comes in late in the story. Anyway, uh, so when you're out there where you're at, you've spent a lifetime dedicated study into being who you are. You are not a, a, a typical usual person. There's just... Mm. just it's not better or worse it's just the reality so yes. that that's part of how they are their style like i say when they go into a room uh, everything changes right and and it's like with a priest and a, a well-respected priest in the old days when they entered into a room everything changed as a matter of fact you know my father was a, a, a doctor and when 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 the very first town that i lived in was a very small town five thousand people more or less right wherever he went everything changed because he was the doctor. I mean, there was God, and then there was the doctor, right? That was it. God came first, doctor came second. Uh, he had most power, more than the mayor or anybody else, doesn't matter, the mayor meant nothing. But the doctor, he had power over life and death because he was the only doctor in the whole uh, district, right? I mean, you, you, if you had something wrong with you, by the time you got to the city where the other doctors or the next town because they were far away, you were dead already then, right? So doctor had very real power over you. Uh, so everything changed, right? And 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 because of this, I got to understand very powerful things. It's very useful to me. Anyway, another long story. So my point is that it's appropriate sometimes. Now, maybe not with a doctor, it wasn't appropriate because my father's a BMN, he's a terrible person. Uh, but he was given credibility that was undue. Whereas with a new nobility, it is due. And and it does behoove the, the environment to be paying attention. Yes. Not that they're trying to teach. They, they, they absolutely will never, ever teach. They'll always share. But what they have to share is things that are share-worthy. Yeah? So the whole system is a very thought-through, very powerful system. So, of course, the new nobility set up the agglomeration, but they are setting up the agglomeration in which they are a part they aren't, they aren't saying, because the, the agglomeration is run by bureaucrats, regular, some of them may be new nobles, but others not, right? Um, they, they're not looking to impose their culture, but they're also setting up a system in which their culture has the opportunity to be influential. Very important difference, not to be influential, but there's the opportunity to be influential. Now, in some parts of it, it is profoundly influential, and like in the space travel, this is of necessity. Yes, cannot be up, cannot be avoided. If there is going to be a particular culture in charge of space travel, let it be the new nobility rather than just everybody, right? Because it prevents this war spreading off planet, yeah, or between planets. 
So very, very powerful. All right. Uh, any, any, any more on this before we, we continue reading? I love this topic. It's a very, very, very important part of the entire story that the new nobility are there to be experienced. It was in chapter one, right? They were there to be experienced. Yeah, they're not there to teach. They're not there to whatever. They're there to be experienced. Yes, yes. and that's up to you. When you experience and them spreading out through the, out the grammar in communities, when you experience them, this has an effect on the culture, right? Yes. A very, very powerful effect on the culture. Yeah, yeah. Ramsey says, I believe we hold the ladder straight for a long time and look to climb it at all costs that we forget about ethics, nobility, and values. That's the corruption of the superior paradigm. Absolutely. That ladder of ambition. It's a terrible ladder, exactly. It, it, it totally makes you forget about all of the stuff. We need to hold it back horizontally and treat everyone else as equal. This is what I personally did. I don't look at me, head, thoughts, arms, and legs, but rather as a state of blissfulness only. The simpler my life is, the more spiritually sophisticated I become. Exactly, Ramsey. Exactly. It's about being, independence of being. And this is what the new nobility strive for. But they don't just strive for it to have it be something that's just them and that they can feel it. They want to know it. They want to be able to express it, articulate it, elucidate it, right? So they, they want to have this maximum full awareness. As you see, that that how much we're sharing that are new concepts to your blissfulness, right? That add to your to your understanding of your blissfulness. So the more understanding we have, the more awareness we have, and awareness feeds on awareness. So it's a magical thing. It's a very magical thing, very powerful. So this idea of the new nobility, it's it's not an idea that everybody should be this, but but at least within the world, there should be something like the new nobility because the world needs it, because it's lacking in the world today. We have everything else except this. It's not an option and it needs to be an option because when it is an option, many of the other options by comparison, by contrast, simply become idiotic and nonsensible. Yeah, Which is why the new nobility makes such a big difference when they're in a community. You start looking at that and you say, oh, wow. Well, you know, I I want to be this, I want to be that. Well, compared to that, it's kind of lame. Or you might decide, well, that's really what I want to do. It's not lame, it's what I want to do, see? And it's legitimate, it's justified. Yeah, I want to be an artist, I want to be a professional athlete, whatever you want to be. And you say, okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it with my own integrity and sensibility and all of this, right? And it's justifiable, good. And nobody's going to argue with you, at least of all the new nobility. Very powerful. Very, very powerful. Please continue, Magical Bina. Please continue. Yes. Okay. No political or social policies of any kind except appropriateness. Each new noble is left to their own conscience and beliefs. The fact they usually are in agreement is a consequence of their underlying ethics, their shared sensibilities. Practice we employ and are thoroughly taught of thinking things through to the very end almost always leads us to the same place. For good measure, we have added, nothing is set down. Our precepts and ideals are all taught individually, passed on to each successive generation, each new noble imparting their own particular perspectives and sets of values. Each and all are continually striving to improve, to add to themselves. The system continues to grow and refine. We are encouraged from our first day here and constantly reminded to seek out as many different opinions and perspectives of what constitutes the new nobility as possible. Right, and there, uh, Ramsey, there is the, the explanation of why they are. They are perpetually the new nobility because it's always renewing right yeah yeah then we might call them the renewing nobility or a new nobility right a new a n e w one word 
a new nobility because they are always a new right? very cool very cool so there's no curriculum no timetable no qualification nothing like that one of the delegates ventured with astonishment keep going bina <laughs> okay <laughs> none biela said uh, not elaborating for emphasis did i overdo it for ursula biela tried again to gauge ursula what do you make of it all so far ursula biela asked deliberately adding in the so far to connect with ursula's specifically it's fascinating and not what i expected admirable ursula replied perfect response Ad admirable admirable ursula replied admirable. Yeah, admirable. Yeah, yeah yeah admirable oh no no you uh, admirable the pronunciation what it was just it's fascinating and not what i expected admirable there was just a pause there, break there, because he's saying it on its own, right? And But this so far is important. Um, Biela wants to connect to not only what she said to when all the delegates were there, but to what she said to the Ursula before that, right? So Biela has the whole, I mean, Ursula has the whole story. Yeah. Uh, admirable, right? And it's not, now we say it's not what I expected. And admirable. So we're starting to see a little bit of what's going on inside Ursula. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait this. a second, wait a second. Yeah, mm -hmm. I chose to be the monk who sold his Ferrari and returning back to basics, have an organic life. I love this. I love this, uh, Ramsey. Uh, uh, you know, you just, uh, I think you, you invited me to come there and you might just find me one day turning up there on your beautiful farm and I might never leave just to be away, right? So I, I love, I love how you have it going on. I'm just letting you know uh, ahead of time. Just, uh, I'll tell you right away. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. <laughs> B Bina thinks I'm joking a bit, but I, I might be very serious. Yeah. Okay. Just okay. so you know. So you know. Yeah. A neatness, <laughs> tidiness, and efficiency graced Ashla's interactions. Biela thought so smooth, so professional, yet not studied or artificial. What was behind it? an extremely polished ability to communicate and interact or a genuine creating a boat. The goodness was evident. Now Biala thought it through a bit. The question really was, Biala realized whether Ursula was after more or not. Satisfied, she reduced the puzzle to its root. Biala reassessed the situation at ease now, having identified the problem. A solution shouldn't be too hard to acquire. The new nobility continually struggle with contradiction, Biala stated, surprising and startling them. They see too much. Yeah, so, so look what Biala does, right? So in the previous tasks and exercises, we said, uh, you know, what may have led to be Biela being thrown off stride a little bit or put out a little bit, or I forget the, the, the exact question, right? Um, mm -hmm. Oh, look what Ramsey says. Look what Ramsey says. Be I need to copy this and put it into my file, yeah. <laughs> Me uh, and the chicken here. Yeah, uh, so uh, uh, you see, yeah, I'm, I, 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 always, I always mean what I say, Ramsey. See, there it is. Ramsey, me and the chicken here yeah, are looking forward to your visit. So, all right, there we go. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you never know. You never know. You know, you never know. I have a Ramsey shared photos of where he's at. It's just beautiful oh. and gorgeous. Mina, it's truly beautiful. Uh, all right, so uh, real quick to go on to this point of where was I now? Oh, so Biela had this conundrum, right? But then she figures it out. And she reduces it to a puzzle. Now, Biela right now has resolution without solution. Yes. Thank you, Ramsey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ramsey. I think I have to add that too. Things like this are not idle to me. They are not idle to me. You know, I, when I say that to somebody, I really, really mean it. So I, I, I take it that also Ramsey is meaning it, yeah. So it's a, it's a very profound thing to say. It, it, that's why I, I put it in my file there. It's, it's a very big deal. 
uh, to get back to Biela, right? Biela has now come to resolution about Ursula. The issue is, is she after more capital M more or not? Some people are, some aren't. It's not a negative or a positive either way. You not, don't have to or not. It just, just depends on your personal predilections in life, your personal choices, desires, etc. Right? And, and, and this was what was uh, uh, not clear to Biela, but now it has become clear. She knows what the thing is to look for and, and, and it's, it's all resolved. She doesn't have the solution yet to whether Ursula wants more or not, but she knows what to look for. Life is easy. Now she can move on. She's free. And now she brings this up in a roundabout way. Right? The new nobility continually struggle with contradiction, Biela stated, surprising and startling them. They see too much. It's not an obvious statement. It's a layered statement to it. But first, let me lay out a basic overview of what the new nobility are, what they stand for, how they fit into society, and so on. Biela continued, not giving them time to comment. She wanted their attention. Biela, Abina? Yes. Keep going. <laughs> okay. Um, now they, they have a puzzle and I'm about to provide the twigs for them to build a solution. But there is so much, so, so much. Right. So she leaves them with this question, right? The statement rather, the new nobility continually struggle with contradiction. They see too much. Right? So they're always looking to resolve things, figure things out, right? Many contradictions in their lives, trusting without trusting. See, they have resolved that particular, but there's these typical contradictions that we come and they look to resolve them because they see the layers, they see how things apply in one context, they see how it applies more, so they have to deal with us, right? So it, it's a big insight into this. As you might as well just saying that, that because the new nobilities pay so much attention to discernment and because it's a skill, that they have uh, developed through consistent, persistent practice, constant, continuous practice. They are they are very adept at discernment. Of course, they want to be more so, but that discernment leads to seeing contradiction. Yes, yeah. When you see too much, you see contradiction. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. look when we see all of a person, right? A, a typical person that you see, or oh, they have good hearts. And, and, and they have a deep intent to goodness, they have an intent to mourners, but yet they can be foolish and silly and petty and childish sometimes. So what? But it's a contradiction, see? So that's when you see too much, you see the entirety, and then you see that people are, for the most part, living contradictions. Look at the artwork here again, Vina. Yes. You know, and, 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 and different awareness as part of another one, right? Maybe Biela taking in Ursula, Ursula taking in Biela. <laughs> Contradictions, puzzles, puzzles. Very cool. All right, let's see what the thoughts and exercises are here. Thank you, Ramsey. That really touched me. That really touched me. You know, I would love to have a home where I could say the same to you and to Norma and to Elizabeth, and to Bina, and to Sher and everybody, and say, hey, you want to come, visit, stay, as long as you want, you're free, you're free. I, this would give me the greatest joy, you know, where I could, could you know, have that connectivity. This, this would be a great joy. This would be a great joy. Yeah, great joy. Uh, okay, some exercises. Uh, do you feel the new nobles needed to explain their actions afterwards? Was it necessary? Depends. Was it? Depends. Ah, uh, on. Uh, depends on the on the context on the situation. Uh, sometimes uh, they do take uh, like really uh, uh, actions yeah. and uh, uh, based on on a very big bigger picture. Okay, not uh, and which doesn't make any sense to in, in the in the local perspective. Correct. So then sometimes people who are involved and they are trusting them. Uh, and and especially when the result or the resolution or the solution is not obvious, then yes. they might need. Yes. To. Yes. So can I can I pause you there for a second, uh, Rabina? Because yes. uh, uh, my art is just saying it's got to share. It's got to say uh, yes. Thank you, Norma. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Norma. It's absolutely Norma. That that's a huge statement there. Yeah. Can you read what Norma says. Very beautiful. Oh, you, you make us and our homes now. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you, Norma. Thank you, Norma. I, I like to be a part. The idea that I'm a part of your home, Norma. Ah, oh, uh, makes me deep joy. Deep joy. If you take life too seriously, it would crush you. Exactly. Have the right base and ethics and be playful as much as you can. See kids how much yes. uh, more happy they are. And this is part of the new nobility culture, Ramsey. They seek to be simultaneously childlike and sophisticated. The problem with children is we remember them only as being happy and playful. We tend to forget when they were crying and squabbling and doing all other stuff too, right? So because they lack sophistication, they're a bit vulnerable to the environment. They can't really exist on their own. But if you add and you maintain that positive part of being childlike and you add the sophistication, now you can extend that and you can take care of your own survival and stuff like this, right? You're not dependent, you're not vulnerable. So this is why sophistication and the childlike must coexist. It's very, very, very important. And it's, it's like I say, it is deeply intrinsic to them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, Elizabeth says, please read, please read. Me too. This is a beautiful curriculum for a devoted community. Yes. 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 Exactly. Exactly. And again, you know, the, what, what I find makes this so powerful is the fact that it is a curriculum that is not pushed or forced. It is a curriculum of choice, and that is totally with the caps and the hyphens, a curriculum of choice, right? So you can look at this and say part of the curriculum is it is saying choose, 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 not should, not should, not should. Most, most curriculums by implication are should curriculums, not this particular curriculum. This is a choice curriculum. It's saying choose choose not must do not all that now should no, none of that not supposed to none of that no choose 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 and that's what makes it ideal as a curriculum because you're going to take it and you're going to use it as a as a starting point and and do and implement and then test experiment and then come back exactly without freedom it can't work precisely and then in your testing your implementation you say well uh, you know, we didn't quite work. Let's go back and look at the, oh, okay, we missed something. But but also then you may apply something else. You say, well, we can take somebody further. This is more suitable to us. And it changes and it adapts, right? Appropriateness, appropriateness, appropriateness. Flexibility, fluidity, and adaptability are intrinsic to appropriateness. If you don't have those three, you can't apply. Uh, you cannot be appropriate. So very important. All right, so on this first question here, by the way, Bina, uh, we're talking about their actions in this context at the conference, right? Did they need to explain there and was it necessary? This, this is something like it depends on that. This is what I shared. But before I, I, I go back to this, I want to add something. This whole mourners project uh, and what you are sharing uh, mm. and what, we, of course, we all are here for. It's all about the choices, as you were saying that, okay all capital C, all caps choice. Um, and the way of impeccability is to actually the qualifier to make appropriate choices because you cannot just give a freedom to anyone and just make choices even for themselves. Some mm. people are not really qualified for that. And this is something very, very uh, intricate point to, to pay attention to that, okay, yes, we all as human, we all have this freedom and liberty to make choices for ourselves. We try to actually expand it and just uh, try to make choices on others' behalf and on uh, for them, so for them, but uh, at least for ourselves. But even for that, we need to have that sensibility, that innate goodness, that innate sensibility accessible to us. And that's the, that's the whole way of impeccability is to actually make you qualify to make choices, to make appropriate choices yes. for yourself. Yes. It's not about what choice you are going to make. No, we have nothing to do with that. And way of impeccability has nothing to do mm. with that. Mm. But to actually being able 
to make impeccable choices, to qualify to make choices. That is something very, very profound. And uh, Elizabeth actually said that the curriculum for uh, the de uh, devoted community, and then you said, okay, it's a curriculum for the choice. This is, this is what I was thinking, the way of impeccability yeah. is actually enables you to make appropriate choices in your life. Whatever yes. the choice is, of course, it is going to be our own decision. So it's a very, very, very good point. And uh, yeah. I, I, from now on, I'm just going to just emphasize on that. Other than the connectivity, other than just giving the due respect, it also enables you to make appropriate choices, to actually yeah. make you qualify for that. It's a very crucial point that Veen is saying, which is why that new is so important in the new nobility because they are founded on way of impeccability. It is their core. Yes, they also understand things like capital H hearing, making space, capital M, capital S, making space, making sense, receptivity, and superiority paradigm. They understand all of this. It's part of the Mornus project. Those are all, you know, capital D diplomacy. These are all profound curriculums within themselves. But each and every extended sophisticated curriculum, like the philosophy of, of uh, takeaway, the philosophy of transition, all of those rest on the foundation of way of impeccability, which is the ability to make decisions, best use of energy. Yeah, yeah. That's the most key, key decision that we have to make. Correct. Communication is also key. Precisely, you know, whenever there's a problem, the, the new nobility, their default is to uh, go, it's communication. That's it. If there's a problem, it's communication. That's it. That's the starting point, always their default. So they communication, capital C communication is a skill they work on constantly, like discernment. They're constantly working at communication all the time, all the time. I mean, somewhere I have uh, Biela's 28 points of communication, uh, precepts or something, I forget what it's called. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, and she just rattles us off one day, just sort of as like a by the by, it's like a casual thing. It's like, wow, well, holy moly, you know what I mean? I, I could make this into a whole course all on its own. Uh, you know, somebody hearing that, it's like, wow, Biela, you just like popped us off the, the edge of your head here. Um, but actually what you're saying is a really big deal. Yeah, it is a really big deal. I mean, you could go and do, you know, a, a whole university course on it if you want to, um, because this is what the new nobility do. They don't just touch on things. They take it to the end, to the very end, as Biala is so fond of saying. She adds in that very. So yeah, communication is one of their uh, concepts in the dictionary of power. It is a power term to them. Absolutely. It's always capital C communication to them. Yeah. Very, very powerful. What do you think of the new noble Zizz, right, Vina? New noble Zizz, because that's right, the apostrophe after this. New noble Zizz. It's hard to say. The new noble Zizz strategy of also utilizing the opportunities presented and created by their explanation. Right, when they went afterwards to the delegates and explained what they did, right? What do you think of that strategy of utilizing the opportunities presented? Kind of an obvious uh, question, really. Sorry, it's a bit of an obvious question, actually. Since yes, we went into it, but... I'm just, I'm just uh, trying to figure out where it said, okay, yes, how to say that. But this is something like, okay, yes, absolutely. This, this whole strategy of doing that is, is really uh, absolutely appropriate. And what? What did I hear in the background? Who was that? No one. Wasn't that Khuncha? Or Nabira or somebody like that? I heard a young voice. No. I don't know who. Was it just me, Ramsey, Elizabeth, Norma? Did you guys hear a child's voice in the background? From Bina? I don't hear anything. I, I, I heard a child's voice in the background there. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. See, Ramsey heard it too. That's why my eyes went big. I thought maybe maybe uh, Huncha or Nabira was a thing, and I would have wanted to say hello. 
Wow. Was it was was it my voice changed or, or something? No, else? no, no. It was it was very clearly like they were and there were some noises that they were like like they were in the hallway or in another room, but you know, where you could hear them. All uh, right, fairly close, but not right there next to you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Wow, Norma says breaking China. Wow. I didn't hear the breaking China part, but but wow. <laughs> Wow, wow. It was very clear. That's why I was so surprised. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. When okay. while, I, while Bina was okay. talking, Bina, it was in the background behind okay. you. Like, you know, sometimes okay, so we, we, hear we have we have now a very interesting thing. And uh, because uh, um, uh, I'm living uh, close to the main road, so uh, and we have an underpass there. So what mostly uh, people do actually that like young boys uh, on their heavy bikes and they just go inside that underpass and I don't know what they do with their sil uh, silencers or something it, it, it creates a huge oh, on the motorbikes uh, yes that that like huge 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 noise yeah and they sit and rev I, the engines at, at high volume and then they get it vibrating off the and resonating off the underpass yeah and it, it yeah so it, sometimes it, it creates very weird sound and, and uh, I can hear that in my room, so I, of course, you guys can also hear that. So maybe sometimes it is just that. It's very, very loud. And it is very, very uh, unfortunate because uh, we do have some big hospitals there on the same road. So I don't know that, okay, why they don't care about it, but okay. right. can't do anything about it. But no, no child, no young person. Yeah. In my room. yeah, it was definitely a child's voice. I mean, that was very clear. And and you know, like like children, and they, well, you know, uh, you know, uh, they, 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 there's a tone to a child's voice. You know, Not, they weren't shouting. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, so I think Elizabeth has to go. Uh, sorry, weekdays are very difficult and sometimes not possible for me to communicate here at this time. But I'm making effort because I see the great value, and I'm grateful to you all for creating the space. It is truly our our absolute deepest pleasure, Elizabeth. And I love that you do make the effort and I appreciate it inordinately. I know it's an effort and I know it's not easy. And I appreciate this inordinately. I, I absolutely do, Elizabeth. And you being here, it makes a big difference to me. It is a real joy that you're here. You know, and the same with Ramsey. And of course with Norma, it's a deep joy that you're here, Norma. It's a very deep joy. Yeah, that was really interesting that there's nobody there uh, because, you know, maybe it was from the neighbors across, you know, but they left but already. I, so you don't even have neighbors. I didn't somewhere. hear anything. I, I didn't yeah, hear anything. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe a spirit voice of some kind. Who knows? Who knows? Being yes, inner voice, knows, inner childlike voice. Because we were talking about being childlike and sophisticated. Much love to you, Elizabeth. <laughs> Much love. We'll see you. We'll see you again, Elizabeth. We'll see you again. Yes. Yes. Bye bye, Elizabeth. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, okay. We're going to wrap um, it up now because we are at the end here now. So we are, well, we got the, the, we're going to just go through the tasks and exercises real quick. What might the logic be behind the new nobility not writing anything down? Well, I sort of explained that already, right? It's to, to keep the new new. So that as Ramsey says, the new doesn't become the old, right? So when you don't write it down, it's always being refreshed. Because if you're yes. repeating something orally, even if you're trying to say it in the same way, that's not how our brains work. They always say it in a new way. And because you are not remembering things exactly, identically, you are remembering the concepts, the understanding. So always you're expressing it in your own words. So it's always new because your expression is a reflection of where you are at with your understanding. You see? So it always keeps it new. Now, just this concept of the, the philosophy of takeaway, which is a session in wave impeccability. That philosophy of takeaway, which incorporates repeatbacks. When you're doing this, you're repeating back on yourself what you heard before, what you understood before. Right? And it's new every time. The fact they usually are in agreement is a consequence of the underlying ethics, their shared sensibilities. Does this make sense? Does it seem feasible or realistic or possible even? Why or why not? Right? This idea that they will end up in agreement, right? And not just because of their ethics, but also because they think things through to the end. Right? Mm -hmm. Does this seem realistic to you or possible even? Yes, why not? We have this in our our interactions and our relationship, do we not, Bina? 
that oh, yes. when we when we think things through, we work it out, we come to a, a sensibility. Now, we may end up doing things differently, but that's style. Style doesn't mean that you are uh, fundamentally uh, at uh, in in some kind of conflict or contradiction when it comes to the underlying sensibility. Uh, style means you're just wanting to do it in a different way, and style is a free choice always, right? So that is a very important thing. But when it comes to the underlying inherent sensibilities, they always end up the same because sensibility is sensibility. It's an objective thing. Yeah. Yes. The question really was, Biela realized whether Ursula was off the more or not. What might this mean or imply in context? All right, so that we'll skip this question because we've gone over this in many ways, in many different ways. We know what the pursuit yes. of moreness means, but that's a good question though, if you're new to this, right? And you haven't yes. gotten there. And then it's a nice question, nice question. The new nobility continues struggle with contradiction. They see too much. Biela doesn't elaborate. What do you feel she's referring to here and what this could this mean? I already did elaborate, so we'll skip that one too. As usual, play name that app with this chapter. List both the repeat conceptions of power and those which are new. This is a very useful exercise, by the way, right? For anybody watching this, yeah? And and I, I, I do know that these are being watched on YouTube. They're getting, they're getting a, a bunch of views on YouTube, right? So for anybody watching this, this name that app, it's not name that app as in, uh, you know, Word or TikTok or whatever, not that kind of app. The app here stands for application as in a doing that you are doing as in an, uh, um, in the dictionary of power, things like uh, impeccability, ethics, integrity, etc. right? Uh, so this is a very powerful thing to, to do to play name that app. So if we go through this, and we we just i'm just going to stop at random here uh the second new noble spoke out loud as is sure voicing her thoughts what is she doing here right she is practicing deliberateness but she's also practicing inadvertency this is absolutely one of the concepts in our dictionary of power inadvertency it is a profoundly powerful understanding Right? And she's using inadvertency in a very, very deliberate, precise, sophisticated way here. So she's also being profoundly strategic. Yes. So she's applying this uh, strategy. She's applying inadvertency. She's uh, applying deliberateness. Um, but also what she is doing is she is not pushing. Right. So she's not telling. So she's practicing sharing. Yeah. And she is, mm -hmm. this is from a communication point of view, right? That capital C communication. This is a profoundly sophisticated communication. So we, we name that app. She's, she's communicating. She's really communicating. If she would just tell them, hey, you guys, uh, you know, uh, you better like listen up here. It's not too bad. Get, get it right. And, and you, uh, that would just backfire. It's not communication, right? I mean, that would, that would be a terrible way to do it, but I'm, I'm using it for example here. Right. So she was communicating and, and she was presenting choice. See, so capital C choice. She is this curriculum of choice. This is exactly what her saying it to no one in particular. It is to provide choice. Yes. So it's a yes. very, very profound strategy there. Plus she is being honest. Uh, yes. Many ways to tell the truth. Yes. Okay. But she's also being honest, right? And, and she's maintaining her integrity. Because uh, yes, all right, uh, she she's not uh, she knows that she's necessarily going to be uh, what she says is going to be interpreted by those according to their own bubbles, but it doesn't make it any different from her internal integrity and that she's saying is true, right? So she is practicing ethics as well. So look, in just this one sentence, all these apps that come into it, right? But being able to see them and recognize them is very profound. It is very, very useful. It adds to our discernment. It's a very, very powerful thing. So playing name that app, I, I really, really rec uh, recommend this, right? And do so regularly. It's a very, very powerful game, right? And we do it on a regular basis um, because it makes you see things differently. And it adds to your awareness, your insight and your discernment and your application ultimately. Where do you think the story is heading with Ursula? Bina? Oh, this is interesting. This is very interesting question. Yeah, because you uh, don't know. 
you don't exactly. know uh, yeah because uh, when we when we don't know anything of course we are going to assume and uh, by by all her uh, her way of being so far uh, this is just it's going to be very interesting and also that uh, very anomalous uh, unusual behavior from Biala. Uh, her thoughts about her her efforts to be friend and her cautions and being cautious all these things are showing that that uh, arshla is not like some any other yeah. she has yeah. something something unique and different and uh, unusual about so yeah. that is some yeah. yes uh, uh, I'm now, to know, but I cannot just say something about it. Wow, you're right, Norma. She seems a mystery to me. She is. She is a big mystery. Now, one thing that has been lacking here that would be in the book is a table of contents. Hmm. Do you recall the slides from where we, you know, when when I do the sharing and all that, you know, when they listed in slides? And you know which is the equivalent of a of a table of contents. Uh -huh. Do you recall that, Bina, or not? No, not exactly. Uh, oh, dang it! I, I don't know why I can't move this. Why couldn't I drag that? That was really weird. Oh, what's going on here now? See, it's not. It's not. It's not letting me. Uh, well, um, there's, there's always multiple ways to do everything. So in the table of contents, uh, yeah, all right. I don't need this now either. Ay, 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 come on now. Um, you know, when you look at the table of contents, it sometimes will give you a clue as to what's coming. Yes? Yes. All right, so if you had paid attention to the table of contents, which you did have the opportunity to do, at least the limited, see these, this, yeah. Remember this? This is what I mean now. This is the equivalent of the yes. table of contents, right? Yes. So, so what do you see here? Seeing the Diala and the nobility, the Bilga, Ashla, the aspect. Where were we last? What was that question again? Oh, uh, where do you think the story is heading with Ursula, Bina? Yes. Oh, I'm not getting it. I cannot say that. Rewind, rewind, rewind your, your conversation. What did you say a sentence ago? Viala, the aspirant? Correct. Where do you think the story is heading with Ursula? Oh. So she is not going to be what I was assuming. Which is what? Like like someone someone like Biala. Not Biala, but someone like Biala. Isn't Biala an aspirant? Yes, we of course everyone right. is. But Ursula at this point in time is a delegate, not an yes. aspirant. She's not part yes. of Nobilia, she's from a whole different world. So yes. the story is heading towards Ursula becoming an aspirant, in other words. Yeah. And that's it. Wow. Okay. It's it's a very big deal, wow, because Ursula's there on a mission. She's an she's there to to to, to to facilitate and bring her world into the agglomeration or at least to help the decision as to whether they will join the agglomeration or not. So so she's not there to you know become an aspirant or do other things. She's got a mission, right? So wow. it's not it's not uh, it's not a duh. Now it says Ursula the aspirant. We don't know if Ursula does become an aspirant. It might just be uh, you know, a metaphorical thing, right? That as she's an aspirant in her heart or not. We don't know if she technically becomes an aspirant or not. We'll see. But yeah, there's there's a big mystery to this. It, you, you're quite right, Norma. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a very big deal. All right. Uh, speculate and imagine. In other words, practice thinking differently. Yeah. I think we we can we we can wrap up now because yes uh, tomorrow then, yes uh, we have we have one more question we have one more question. We have okay. one more question. 
Does Biella need to do what she thinks about in her closing thoughts? How and why is she thinking it? What might be the, okay, I don't know what that means. So we'll just go to India and, and uh, I think we're at the end. Oh, I can't update anyway. So, so yeah, so we'll, 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 we'll end over here now. So yeah, very good. Uh, my, everything is frozen here, so I can't do much, oh. but, but I will, um, I will, I will end this here. So, uh, okay, thank you, Ramzi. Norma. Thank you, Norma. Yes. And thank you, Elizabeth. And thank you, anyone who is going to watch or listen to this thing. Uh, we, we, we would love to see you guys uh, tomorrow again. And uh, Ramzi and Elizabeth and Norma, especially you guys, because uh, today, again, we were, we were digressing, we were get to sharing more. And that was the whole part of the story. It, it is bringing more lists. And, and yeah. we are discussing and every single time I feel more connected. I feel like, okay, I know yes. more, more yes. about you. I, I like, okay, we yes. are, for me personally, I can say that gradually uh, I, I'm feeling like, okay, we are becoming friends now. Okay, yes. so yes. simple sharing here yes. and there. We are sharing yes. you, Ramzi, Norma, uh, Elizabeth, and of course, Sher. Sher is also, she's always there, but um yeah. ramsey yeah. and especially elizabeth yeah. and norma uh, i feel like like we are gradually moving towards where we will become friends so yes, yes. in other words you are creeping into Bina's heart you're already deeply in my heart but you're now creeping into Bina's heart this is a beautiful thing it's a beautiful yes. thing a beautiful yes. thing so perfect timing i have to go i have a customer coming for the for the bulk purchase deal so that's very cool that is very cool so wonderful, wonderful. All right. So now, Rabina, before we, we before we end session, important to click on save transcript. Yes. Transcript saved. So in folder. Okay. Because I have yeah. to, I have to, I have to see, see, it didn't automatically ask me to title it, Rabina. It just, yes. it just, well, I'm not screen sharing. Okay. So it just said saved in folder. And then I clicked on open in folder and it takes me to where it saved it. Uh, in the Zoom file, but now I can retitle it, right, into whatever it is. So I'll leave that for a little later. But but that was just good to know. So I'm sharing it with you, right? When you click Save Transcript, it doesn't prompt you to title it. You have to go to the folder and title it. So that's just okay. something okay. to be aware of. Thank you. So Thank you. Um, and, I'm, uh... Uh, okay, so I'm just going to end the, the I'll, I'll stay on, on, on Zoom, but I'm going to stop the live stream. So.